Good morning, everybody. I literally just woke up a few minutes ago, decided to make this video before I go shoot a wedding um, somewhere just outside of New York. And it's a double header this weekend. Uh, last week, I did a live stream demonstrating uh, the new Photoshop beta. They released a completely separate app that is the next version of Photoshop, but just specifically called the beta. Its main standout feature is called generative fill. So if you've used content aware before, uh, it's a pretty impressive feature to be able to just select something and then it doesn't just clone, stamp, and repeat. It tries to generate a fill object using smartly stuff around it. Well, generative fill uh, pulls in AI assets um, from Adobe's stock photography to smartly generate fill. So there's two ways you can do this. One, you can basically add an AI object uh, anywhere in the scene, which is crazy. Um, but two... If you expand the image uh, canvas size or the crop larger than the photo itself, it will do a shockingly good job of filling in that expansion. So I'm just going to demo it a few times. Uh, I've only done this on one or two images, but I'm going to do it on some new ones. I haven't even seen the results of myself. So I have a feeling the images you're going to want to do this on are going to be ones that have sort of... Um, a repeating pattern kind of thing in the background. You know, I'm not totally sure about that yet, uh, but let's just give it a try. So I'm gonna expand the, the crop. Now, previously you could just uh, do this and then up here in this little tiny corner, uh, hit content aware and it would fill, let's just do that to start. So you hit accept the crop. It's gonna try and fill in all that white with uh, it's old model. There you go. So it's more of a, yeah, it's pulling from other assets nearby to expand it out. So that doesn't look good at all. You could maybe try and start to clean it up, but it's, it's not very impressive. Okay. If we expand this out here, I'm going to turn off content aware, accept the crop. I'm going to select the, just, just on the inner side of the border and then hit inverse selection. So it's really selected all of the new canvas area, then hit this generative fill button. You can type in a description of what you want, but I'm not even gonna type anything. Let's see how it does. This is a significant expansion. It's like almost 50% larger and it's uneven. I didn't even do a good job centering it. And I'm really curious to see what it does with this rock. I think it's gonna do a good job with the sky. Wow, look how much better that is than the content aware feature. Uh, it even added like a natural vignette. This tree gets a little wonky, but it tried to like add the distortion of a wide angle. These bricks look kind of wonky, but pretty natural. This rock actually looks the best of ever, anything it generated. That is insane. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, okay, so don't save. Let's look at another one. I'm almost afraid. Let's do this one where there's mostly just green. Uh, yeah, it's already a JPEG. Okay, so do, 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 do. I'm sure there's a better way to do this. Uh, I'm just going to go, I'm just going to add a lot of headroom. I'm not even going to center it. So, okay, I'm going to accept the crop. Just do this selection and then invert. Select inverse. Here we go, generative fill generate. Now this being grass and just the consistent repeating pattern of woods and green, I think this is going to do a really amazing thing. I'm really excited to see right now. Oh my gosh. Huh. Okay. That's insanely impressive only because it added sky where there wasn't any we should double check. I don't know what's going on here. This looks like a, a flaw. A lot of times it gives you variations. Okay, so we have variations to choose from. Three. So I'm going to go to one of the other variations. There we go. Wow. Holy shitballs. The original photo has no sky. No blue sky. And it added sky so naturally. Okay, we're going to have to try one more. Let's try one with uh, with people. So this is a crowd of people all on the edges of the, is it going to AI generate just random new people? What? Here we go. 
Okay. Not as intensely huge. And I'm going to try centered first. Centered-ish. All right. Selecting close to the edge as I can get. That's good. Like I said, I'm sure there's actually a better, faster way to do this. I'm just still experimenting. So inverse and then generative fill. I'm going to say nothing. Uh, so I'm pretty sure you definitely need an internet connection for this to work because it's pinging all of Adobe's models up in the cloud to generate this stuff. I'm curious what it'll do with that flare. I'm guessing it will do great things with all of the upper area and just fall apart. Yeah, what is even, what is even happening here? It's like it tried to make a picture frame. So there's going to be some images that it works better on than others. This is the last one I'll try, and I'll show you the other more, I think, intended way to use this. Uh, normally, you can just select a space and then say generative fill and then say like vintage airplane. And it will literally generate a vintage looking airplane that tries to match the scene. Uh, and it'll also give you three variations of everything it generates. So usually one of them will look really convincing. More than like a really specific object, I think this is going to do magical things for more textural based objects like a cloud or tree branches or yeah, this is just an airplane coming out of like the edge. It's kind of cool. I mean, it looks semi realistic. The light's kind of coming from the right direction. But if you said, uh, let's see, I'm going to say clouds and generate. I'm curious what it'll do with the overlap of the trees that I selected, if it'll be smart enough to not remove the tree branches and just add clouds in the sky where I want or what. Uh, it does have easy to select background um, modes. I probably should have hit that, but let's just see what happens. Cool. So it did cut out the tree a little bit. Look at that. It added a beautiful cloud and improved on the composition overall. This is insane. Okay. This is insane. <laughs> Let's see how it does with uh, an expansion of them. Oh, I think I know why the last one had like a weird white frame. I'm going to flatten this and uh, make it a layer instead of uh, keeping it as the background because you want clean, uh, a clean grid of pixels, not white. Okay, so accept the crop. Okay. This is, this feature is making me feel weird about life. Generative fill, generate. So I'm adding more canvas data while also having the generated fill cloud and extra trees that are coming out of nowhere. So here's the potential downside to a feature like this. This is why I've always had an aversion to doing anything like out of camera. When you have literally limitless options, it's almost so overwhelming that it hurts your creative flow. Like being able to add a cloud anywhere in every picture and have it look normal now, or a bird, or tree branches, is going to be a little overwhelming because I know there's going to be a pathway. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. It even extended her dress and body in a way that is kind of convincing. <laughs> I could clean that up a touch, but wow. Look at all that. Oh my God. Okay. Okay, this is crazy. Nobody's going to know what's real anymore. I don't know how I feel about this. I don't, I'm not worried about it putting me out of, out of a job, but God, you're just not going to know what's a real photo. <laughs> Better to... Learn the feature, so at least you know the limits of what's possible. But, wow. Okay. I'm going to go shoot a wedding now. Bye.